The gamers Eric Schweitzer got to attend a special Alan Wake 2 preview event and chat with members of the game's development team. So let's hear from Kyle Rowley and Molly Maloney and see some of that sweet Alan Wake 2 footage. Uh, my name's Kyle Rowley. I'm the game director of Alan Wake 2. My name is Molly Maloney. I am a principal narrative designer on Alan Wake 2. I started on this project. I was the second employee on the project. Longest serving person now, actually, outside of Sam, who's been on this project in his head since the first one. So 12 years, 13 years. So, yeah, uh, I started in 2019 in January. So, yeah. And I joined Remedy in January of 2022, specifically to work on Saga. I joined during Quantum Break, like the start of Quantum Break. So they'd just come off of doing an American Nightmare. And, you know, there was ideas about what Alan Way 2 could be. I think we've released video about that stuff. Um, Story-wise, I don't know too much about that. But I do know that, like, from quite, like, maybe on the, well, how many iterations of this game have there been? There's been quite a few. We don't like, ever feel like every iteration of a, any new game we do starts off as Alan Wake 2, basically. Uh, but at least, you know, when we were doing Quantum Break, we definitely had an idea of an FBI agent being part of this experience. Um, I mean, and that's kind of like showcased in, in, in kind of like the, the kind of Easter egg that we put inside Quantum Break itself. Like some of the, there's some echoes there of the, some of the, the narrative themes that we were exploring. Um, but so it's been there for a while, but it's definitely changed and matured as we've been working through the production of this game. Um, so yeah. So Saga is our second playable character, uh, portrayed by Melanie Liburd, who's awesome. Uh, her, uh, the reason for her being is many, there are many reasons. Uh, first of all, core theme of the game is duality, two worlds, light versus darkness, two pre playable protagonists is part of that. Uh, Saga is of course a great entry point. Uh, it's been 13 years since players have seen this world, so either uh, for new players or returning players alike, it's been a while. Um, having a having a point of view for a person who's seeing Bright Falls and our take on the Pacific Northwest for the first time is very valuable. But then finally, and I think most importantly, um, Alan has been gone for 13 years. He's been immersed in the dark place. Uh, he has a lot going on. Saga provides a very valuable point of view um, as a foil to him. Uh, she is brought in as this extremely talented FBI agent and veteran profiler. Uh, she's trying to solve this increasingly impossible mystery. Um, and she has a way of looking at things that I think really provides valuable context that Alan cannot provide simply because he's so steeped in the experience. So it's a lot of work she's doing. <laughs> Specifically on this game, like for example, on the Saga side, you know, when it comes to like FBI agents investigating like ritualistic serial killings, we definitely leaned on things like, or looked for inspiration in things like True Detective, uh, like just like even from a like art direction perspective, like how, how we wanted the game to feel. Um, and then, you know, you got the, the kind of uh, buddy cop scenario where you got two cops kind of on this case and like how they play off each other. Like that was something that we definitely referenced. Uh, we were obviously a heavily uh, from an art direction perspective like anything that's done by Cohen brothers like uh, Fargo for example like small town Americana bad stuff happening like how do characters interact and stuff like that and then on like dark place with with Wake's experience definitely like seven visually like it rains all the time in seven it gives a very oppressive feeling so like and water plays quite an important role in the, some of the themes for this game so like how we utilize uh, the weather to kind of uh, not just like visually, but also like through storytelling methods. Like like Seven, I think is very is something that kind of like does that really well. Uh, Taxi Driver, for example, like aesthetics of New York, grimy, dirty, um, many many different things. Well, anecdotally, one of the ones I love talking about is Seven, and I remember when I was sitting down with it for the first time, it was all it was already stood up in some ways, um, and uh, uh, the relationship between Saga and Casey to me felt so similar in a lot of ways to Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman in Seven. It's just like there's this charming. Uh, obviously, you're surrounded by bleakness, uh, but then there's this kind of charming dynamic between the two of them that I think is really authentic and character driven. And I think like that's the heart of it, right? Is like there's this really supernatural, strange world that we're a part of, a creepy world. Um, but the characters have a lot of heart, and they bring that humanity to it that kind of creates this great contrast. We've had the idea of two playable characters for for a little while, like it was part of the concept. And one of the things that we wanted to do, you know, just from a 
ex game experience perspective, not even necessarily just purely on the storytelling side, but the ability for the player to have slightly more agency over how they want to play the game. Um, so, you know, when I play horror games, it's like I'm kind of like, I'm getting, I'm getting creeped out. I'm like, okay, I think I'm done for now. I'm gonna go play something else. Like Animal Crossing or something, something cute and cozy. Uh, but like we were like, okay, but you know, we have these two kind of experiences and 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 levity and like you know, having slight quirky humor and, and that stuff is part of the Alan Wake IP. So the ability for the player to kind of decide that I'm just going to go play as a different character, I think was kind of was part of that whole like drive to kind of allow the, the agency to experience the story as you want. Um, games are obviously an interactive form, so we want to give the player control over how they experience the story as much as we felt we could, while still maintaining the core of the essence of what the story we wanted to tell was. Um, so that was definitely a, a driving factor for that. And that affected a lot about, like, we would have written this story differently if we'd done a, a, a game where we would have dictated exactly where you play as each character the story would have been different but because we allow the player to kind of play these two parallel experiences uh that definitely affected like the types of story we, we actually ended up make uh, type of story we ended up making uh so yeah well a really quick like as developers we're always looking to push ourselves too you know it's like we wanted to provide two stories and we we were excited by that challenge um, but I also think that there's a very specific story that Sam and, and Clay, uh, our um, writers, want, you know Sam, uh, wanted to tell. Uh, and so it was less about like what you were doing was not on the table, but how you do it was something that we wanted to provide with players. Like what is the route you want to take through that context and or through that content and how does that recontextualize it? Like became like a really fun challenge as we outlined and designed the experience. The game structure is that you we start you off and we introduce you to Saga as a character, her side of the story, the Pacific Northwest, and then we will kind of like through the narrative move you through to playing some of uh, Wake side of the story inside the Dark Place and, and the Nightmare in New York. And then after that point, basically as a player, you can decide which character you want to play as and which story you want to progress through. They are connected. It's like it's not like we're creating two separate stories. It's one cohesive story, but they kind of interconnect in interesting ways. And then at, and then at a certain point towards the end of the game, we kind of like you'll finish that what the one of the character decides, and we kind of force you to go back and play the other one so that they're in parallel. And then we kind of wrap things okay. up. So yeah. You know, one of the core themes for this game and also the first game is like obviously light and darkness. Yeah. And we knew that we wanted to maintain this idea of like fight with light and then adding the concept of hide of light, which creates this kind of survive with light concept. Um, but on top of that, we wanted to kind of make sure that we bet utilized it in ways outside of combat. We wanted to try and find ways to, to kind of allow players to utilize light in ways that uh, expands their like uh, uh, variety of gameplay they can do. So you, the idea of like, uh, light revealing the way or light giving clarity was something that thematically we were quite interested in. And I just kind of like, and we just started basically asking the team like, hey, we got, we got this is the concept. We know the light and darkness is important. important. We know we want to do some idea with the puzzles. Like how can we use light to kind of allow the player to explore this game world this, using this dream logic in interesting ways. Um, so it took a long time to kind of figure out visual style. Like, like, and you know, as you mentioned, like this Insta snap, like was something that we knew we wanted, like, we found quite early on, but technologically, like how do we actually make it work? You know, we're utilizing the like SSDs on the on the new consoles very, very effectively to kind of stream in and out data. So like, and that, these a lot of these mechanics that we have, like instantly accessing the mind place, instantly accessing the writer's room, being able to instantly change the environment, like that's only possible because of like the SSD stuff that comes with the next generation of consoles. So yeah, very exciting time to make games, trying to utilize the technology in the best way we can. Night Spring. Special place, a shifting space, existing in a countless number of parallel realities. Sometimes a quaint small town, sometimes a hulking metropolis. Different every time we set upon the road that leads us there. And yet, like a half remembered echo of a fading dream, always familiar to us. These are the stories that take place there awe inspiring, macabre, terrifying heartbreaking, nail-biting, absurd, and thrilling. Sometimes all of these things at once. A haunting new season of mind-bending episodes written by Alan Wake. I am your host, Orlin Dorr, and I will see you soon in Night Spring.